Hello, my name is Noah Elkrief, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how to forgive yourself. So for most of us, when we are looking to forgive ourselves, it's basically because we feel guilty about something we did, we feel anger towards ourselves, we feel sad or bad about something we did in the past. And oftentimes when we feel this way, it can seem impossible to stop feeling this way. It seems as though our feeling is directly created by what we did in the past and that there's no way to escape it. But if you look at your life, did you, do you feel guilty and bad about yourself in every moment? Or are there some breaks here and there? For example, when you're watching TV, watching a movie, listening to music, playing with your kids, or doing something fun, chances are, in that moment, you're not feeling guilty or bad about yourself. The reason why is because in those moments, you're not thinking about it. You're not thinking about what you did. You're not thinking about how bad it was. You're not thinking about how you're to blame for something. So the real reason why you feel angry towards yourself and guilty about what you did is not because of the past action itself, but only because of the thoughts that you have in this moment. When you have certain thoughts, they create certain feelings. In any moment that you don't have those thoughts, those feelings naturally don't arise. So what thoughts are creating this anger and guilt and feeling bad for yourself? Well, when we do something, the only reason why we would feel these emotions is if we have two major thoughts. One, the outcome of what I did is bad, and two, I am to blame for that bad outcome. If we don't feel like we're to blame, we won't experience guilt, and if we don't um, think that the outcome of what we did was bad, then there's obviously no reason to feel guilty about it. So I'd like to show you how it's possible that whatever you did, you're not to blame for it, and whatever you did, it might not be bad. So let's just take a moment and look. Let's, let's look at an example of how this could happen. So first let's look about how what you did might not end up being bad. So for instance, if, there's a, if you crash into somebody and it's your fault, right, and they Let's say you're driving a car, you crash into them, they break their leg. You would think that what you did was so bad, and you'd feel bad about it, right? But, if you talk to them six months later, the victim of this accident, and it turns out that while they were in the um, hospital waiting to fix their leg, they met somebody who gave them their dream job, and they're so much happier now. So now if you look at this, would you still feel bad about what you did? No, probably not, because what you did somehow ended up making that person happier, making the victim happier in their life. So, any time that we have decided something is bad, we're looking at one little effect of what we did, but we're ignoring all the possible future effects of that outcome. So if we break someone's leg, we look, oh, it's bad, I broke their leg, and it seems so obvious that it's bad. But then the simple question that we have to ask ourselves is, do I know what all the effects are of this outcome? Do I know what all of the effects are? So look at your particular situation, whatever you did. And now look, is it possible that what I did could wind up making them happier? Is it possible that it could help the world in some way? Just be creative. What are the possible effects? Is it possible that it could make them happier? It could help them in some way. It may have made them suffer a lot in that moment. But is it possible that it could make them happier in the future? And if it's possible, then do you know that the outcome you helped to create was bad? No, how could you possibly know? How could we possibly know all the effects? We don't. So if we don't know that the outcome of what we did is bad, then there's nothing to feel bad about. So that's the first way to help you forgive yourself about something that you did. The second way is to see that you're not to blame for what you did. 
So it seems that if you committed some action, you're obviously to blame for it, right? But if you weren't to blame, you wouldn't have this guilt, this anger towards yourself. So let's look at an example. If you're watching a car accident occur outside of your window, and you see both people are really suffering, they got hurt, would you feel guilty about it? No, of course not. So why wouldn't you feel guilty? Because you're not to blame. You're not to blame for what happened, so there's no reason to feel guilty about it. So, if we did something, right, if we caused the accident, if we said something to someone, if we hit somebody, if we did something that seemed to create suffering, it seems obvious that we're to blame. But let's take a moment and really examine that assumption. So do you control the thoughts that arise in your mind? Take a moment and look. Do you control the thoughts that arise in your mind? Do you want to be happy? Of course, right? So do negative thoughts create happiness? No. Judgments create happiness? No. Thinking, worrying about the future create happiness? No. But yet you still do it, don't you? You still have all these negative thoughts you don't want to have. If you controlled your thoughts, you would always think positive, never think negative. Maybe not think at all if you could control your thoughts. So it's clear that you don't control the thoughts that arise in your mind. So, if you look, I don't control the thoughts that arise in my mind. Well now, what determines your actions? What determines your actions? Whether to say something nice or to say something mean. What determines that? Who determines that? Thoughts. If we think something negative about them, we'll say something negative about them, likely. And if we think something positive about them, we'll probably say something positive. If we have judgments about someone and hate them, we'll do something hurtful or unloving towards them. And if we have positive thoughts about them and think they're so wonderful, we're likely to act lovingly towards them. But as we already discovered, we don't control the thoughts that arise in our minds. So therefore, we don't determine our actions. Right? I know that's a big, a big statement, and I don't want you to believe me. Look for yourself. If you don't control the thoughts that arise in your mind, and your actions are determined by thoughts, then do you determine your actions? You can also look at it in another way, as in... Let's see, if you, well basically, do you always do what you want? Are there some moments that you really want to do something and you just can't get yourself to do it? If you controlled your actions, you would just do always what you wanted. Are there some things that you want to stop doing so bad, but yet you just can't? If you controlled your actions and your thoughts, you would be able to. So the fact that we can't always do what we want is another indication that we really don't control our actions or the thoughts that control our actions. So if you don't determine your actions, if you don't control them, then you're not to blame for them. Really. And don't believe me. Look. I don't, if I don't control it, then I'm not to blame for it. Just like the car accident that we watch outside the window. If we, if we didn't control the accident, we wouldn't think we're to blame. So if we don't control our own actions, then we're not to blame. And if we're not to blame for it, ah, it happened. It's just a product of what we were taught and the thoughts that arise in our mind and our, our own life history and unique set of experiences, our conditioning. There's nothing we can do about it. So we're off the hook. It doesn't help to feel guilty. We tend to think that feeling guilty means at least I care, and guilt means I care. Guilt doesn't mean you care. Guilt just means you're believing that what you did was bad, and that you are to blame for it. But that doesn't help you to stop acting in the same way. If you want to stop acting the way that you did in the past, you need to di discover what thoughts made you act that way. And then you need to stop believing those thoughts. Figure out why those thoughts aren't true. And then you can act differently in the future. 
Because as you may have come to discover, just feeling guilty about something we did in the past doesn't help us to stop acting in that way. So, to review what we just spoke about, if you want to know how to forgive yourself, or if you want to forgive yourself, first question, do I know that what I did will lead, will end up being bad for the victim? Do I know all the effects? Is it possible? Is it possible that they'll wind up happier because of it? Do I know? And the other questions to ask ourselves is, am I to blame for what happened? Did I control the thoughts that arose in my mind? Did I control the thoughts that determined what actions I would commit? Am I in control of my own actions? Why would I act unlovingly if I was in control? I wouldn't. So then both of those can help us to discover we don't know whether what happened was bad and we're not even to blame for what happened. So you're not to blame for what happened and you don't know whether what happened was bad for you, the victim, life, the world. We don't know. So you can take it easy on yourself. And if you want to make sure you don't do the same thing again, look to see what stories you were telling in the moment that you did that action or said that thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And please don't hesitate to contact me or comment if you have any further questions. See you on the next video.